That, that, that is enough said. What's up, Heat Nation? Ernest here, back with a second Miami Heat Talk video for the day. That's right, you get in two videos in one day. So before we get started, help your boy out with the extra love. Click the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, the reason why I'm giving you guys a second video is because this is a response video. Because literally after I posted the video today, Pat Riley's State of the Miami Heat interview came out. Now, I was in the middle of the workday, so instead of watching the interview, didn't even know what was happening. I actually cut a video and posted it for you guys. Now, I'll be honest, been a little under the weather the last few days, so I've just been in bed. Today, it was get to work, get my groove going, and get you guys this video to respond over the weekend. Um, so, Pat Riley gave the State of the Heat said a lot of juicy things, gave a lot of details, so I want to talk to you guys about it. First and foremost, addressing the last video I cut about the possibility of the Miami Heat moving Jimmy Butler. Seems like those uh, issues, those questions have been put to a halt and they've been addressed and killed. Pat Riley basically said it in the interview today that they're not looking to trade Jimmy Butler. And that, to me, wasn't obvious. I believe I even stated that in the last video. I think I've said that in the past a lot. The Miami Heat are not looking to trade Jimmy Butler. We are in the Jimmy Butler build right now. Dude's only going to be 35 years old. I know a lot of younger generational people will say that's old. Not really. 35-year-old uh, who keeps himself in great condition can still bust ass in the NBA. Look at what LeBron is doing at 39. You know, if you keep yourself at tip-top peak, then you'll have tip-top performances. But it's just like what Pat Riley said as well. If you want to be a max player, you got to be willing to play every night. He even said it. At the Miami Heat will need to give a lot of thought if Jimmy Butler asks for his extension this July unless you have someone who's really going to be available every night. That's a quote from Pat Riley. So I'm pretty sure that was a sign right there to Jimmy Butler and Jimmy Butler's agent. He said that they've not discussed an extension. Um, there was rumors and talks that they have discussed it. We don't know if it is or isn't. We know with these interviews with Pat Riley, you guys, he doesn't really give a lot of in, uh, an info. He'll say things but these are like little hints and signs. You got to kind of read between the line. I know a lot of people take what Pat Riley says a little bit serious, uh, but I really, I wouldn't really read a lot into it. And I'll give you an example. In the interview, there, he was asked about, Pat, about Tyler Hero. He said that Tyler Hero is like, what did he play, like 42 games this season? He said that Tyler Hero has been a little fragile. But then later on in the interview, they asked him about what Udonis Haslam said about Tyler Hero being a six man. And then he says, well, no, Tyler Hero was a starter. He's a starter. Um, he said that Udonis Haslam should have basically kept that to himself and not have said that to ESPN. But Pat Riley views Tyler Hero as a starter. Then he goes on by saying whether it would be Tyler Hero or Terry Rozier as the six man, whatever is in the best interest of the team, we won't know until we have everybody available. Um... He also said great things about Bam Adebayo, Jaime Jaquez Jr., Nikola Jovic, as I've mentioned before. Uh, he mentioned things about Terry Rozier, who's currently wearing a neck brace. So we know that that injury was a little bit more serious than what we thought, but it's something that should be solved by training camp. Um, so a lot of good things, a lot of stuff to dissect. First and foremost, about the thing with Jimmy Butler, what Pat Riley has said is true. They don't have to give Jimmy Butler an extension right now. They could wait it out another year. But we've seen this in today's NBA, you guys. Today's NBA is not like the NBA that it was as late as the mid-2000s. In the mid-2000s, you would play hard, wait until your contract ran out, and then find the best suitor. In today's NBA, it's all about, I'm going to sign a five-year contract and then... I'll, I'll sign a five-year contract or a four-year contract. The final year will be a player option. I'll give it my all the first couple of years, first two years, first three years, depending on the amount of deal. And then when there's two years left on my contract, which is before the player option, I'm going to ask for my player extension after the first year when there's one year left before the player option. And if I don't get it, I'm going to basically 
bitch, moan, kick and scream like a perpetual and child until I'm given what I wanted or until I'm traded to another team. That's the way today's NBA is, is I'm not going to wait till my contracts run out. Give me more money for more time or I'm going to make this situation bad. Now, is Jimmy Butler going to do that? Is Jimmy Butler's agent going to do that? We know that Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat, we know this is a great marriage. We know that they work together. I said this in the last video, and I'm going to say it again in this video, you guys. And this is exactly what I'm seeing from this interview that Pat Riley gave. He's looking to move Tyler Hero. Now, I understand. How can you say that, Ern, if, it, if he calls Tyler Hero fragile? Well, that was one thing that he said about Tyler Hero. It was the obvious thing. He also called Tyler Hero a starter. He also called him a great player. He also called him one of the best offensive scorers. So... We all know, obviously, what Tyler Hero can do. Tyler Hero's thing is about maintaining health. The Miami Heat, you guys, as much as everyone wants to think that the Miami Heat are going to make this big offseason splash or a big offseason move or say things that we need to make these huge rosters in the offseason to change the team, with what this season was and with what the injuries that came with Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero, the chances are making a chance. The chances of making a big trade this offseason is going to be slim. The only way that's likely to happen is if a team says, uh, excuse me, if it's a, if a player says, "I want to go to Miami," who has significant value, and that team says, "Ooh, we want Tyler Hero back for this player, so we don't lose anything." Great, let's get it done. So I'll give you guys a hypothetical. Let's say Cleveland gets bounced in the second round. Cleveland goes to Donovan Mitchell and asks him, hey man, we want to extend you for another four years. Would you be willing to stay? And he says, no, I don't want to stay here. It's not working. Trade me to another team. I preferably want Miami to play with Bam Adebayo. Cleveland and Miami talk and Cleveland's like, you know what? Instead of losing Donovan Mitchell for nothing, we'll take Tyler Hero. Give us Tyler Hero. We'll figure this injury thing out. He may work here. We don't want to lose Donovan from nothing. But look, we're not just going to take Tyler Hero, Pat. We need you to give us an incentive. Include Nikola Jovic or Jaime Hawkins Jr. Throw in some draft picks. Let's make the numbers work to make this deal happen. Guys, it may have to be a combination of Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero for Donovan Mitchell and somebody else to make the numbers work. But that might be something that has to happen. So we need to understand that if you want to get a player like Donovan Mitchell or of equal value, you may have to do a significant trade like that. It's not just going to be for Tyler Hero. Remember, we got this new CBA deal going on. So that's what I took in the meeting because he was saying glowing things about Bam, Nikola Jovic, Jaime Jaquez Jr., Terry Rozier. He said some glowing stuff about Tyler Hero, but the fragile remark got me thinking right there what I've been saying this whole time. And a lot of the things that I've been saying a whole, this whole time the last few weeks have been stuff that Pat Riley says in this interview. Jimmy's his guy. He said that Jimmy Butler is the needle mover on this team. That tells me right there that he's continuing to go with the Jimmy and Bam build. And what did I say in this last video that I posted, you guys? If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Everything that I'm predicting was said in that previous video. I said that if Pat, if Pat Riley was going to continue with a Jimmy Butler build, Tyler Hero was going to have to be traded. And it wasn't going to be for a star. And Pat Riley even said in the interview that they weren't considerably going whale shopping. You may move Tyler Hero to get an additional piece that helps this team right now. It doesn't have to be Donovan Mitchell. It could be a player that really helps you. There may be players that become available. I don't have any names now, you guys, but people may come up. People are going to come up in the forefront. Um, I mean, nothing comes to mind right now. Trust me, some rumor, some names are going to be popping up. I'm coming up with some stuff, you guys. I'm going to throw some stuff out there, but I'm sure you guys are going to name names in the comments. People are going to start coming up these next few weeks, especially when the draft around the corner. The Miami Heat are going to be suitors and they're going to be players in the trade market. But if they're not, you have the 15th trick in the first round draft pick. You have the 43rd pick in the second round draft pick. Two middle draft picks. Your 2031 trade becomes available this offseason. So that he can make things work this offseason. But if not, they can even upgrade the roster with the 15th pick and the second round pick to make us better going into next season. We know that this team is good enough, you guys. We were four games down from the second seed. The only thing that we need is a healthy roster. You give me a healthy roster and guys that know their role on this squad. 
I've mentioned it before, but the starting lineup of Bam Adebayo, Nikola Jovic, Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, Terry Rozier, it works. If Tyler Hero knows his role as the six man, with Jaime Jaquez coming back, Kevin Love, the 15 first round draft pick, hopefully it's Zach Eady. We may lose Caleb Love, but we're going to get guys that are going to help us. You bring DeLon right back for another year. Terry Rozier gets acclimated with this team in a training camp. We can figure this offense out. Bring in some minimal players. Help us with the defense. Space it with three-point shooting. Get us some size. This team can make some noise next year. 2024 wasn't our year. But to make 2025 our year, certain players on this team need to look themselves in the mirror and understand their role. And like The Rock says, know your role and shut your mouth. So let me know what you think, Heat fans. What do you think about this Pat Riley State of the Miami Heat union today? What did you guys garner for that? Do you really feel that some of the things that he said make sense? Or do you think it's just Pat Rileyism, like the Godfather always does, playing the Jedi mind tricks? Let me know in the comments what you think, you guys. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you guys wishing me the well wishes for this sickness. I really hate the fact that I wasn't able to post anything the last few days, you guys. My apologies again. That's why. That's another reason why you're getting two videos in one day. So I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to watch the other video I posted earlier, you guys. Really appreciate y'all liking and subscribing to the channel. Thank you and have a great day. Your boy Ernest out. That's enough said.